As a student nurse, learning in placement can be quite tough, but as a student nurse, you are meant to be responsible for your own learning and proactively engage and seek out opportunities to develop your own learning and ultimately pass the placement by achieving the objectives set by yourself with your assessor. Now my next video, after the one that you're watching now, I'm planning to explicitly lay out year by year the different kind of learning opportunities that you can get when you're in placement and the things that you can do to show that you are proactively engaged in that learning environment. But first I thought it might be more appropriate to kind of set you up the blueprint of how you can conduct your assessments whilst in placement because I know that really stresses out a lot of students. So if you can get this in your bag, the next videos will help you then achieve some of those learning objectives. In this video I am going to break up the assessment process throughout a placement for you just as you would do with planning your initial midpoint and final interviews but before that I want to talk to you about the API model, the assess, plan, implementation and evaluation. We use this in nursing a lot and it's definitely something that we support students with to guide them through every day when they're in practice to see kind of how that nursing process works. It's a simple process where actions are reviewed and sometimes refined when you evaluate them and you keep going through that cycle until you get to the end of what you're planning. Placements are there to provide you with many things but one of them is the experience, the real life experiential learning where you can carry out the assessment, the planning, the implementation and the evaluation of nursing care. But did you know you can actually use this for many things and one of them is your own learning in practice. Using this model you assess what is around you in the learning environment to see which learning opportunities you can gain. You're planning of how you're going to achieve those learning outcomes in your interviews. You're implementing that plan, i.e. that you're completing that set of objectives. And then the evaluation stage is evaluation of the end of every day or every time you get feedback, that's an evaluation of how you've completed your day based on the learning objectives that you've set yourself for that session. And it's also the evaluation of you overall in your actual meetings and interviews with your assessor. So by thinking of your placement in simple terms like that, it can really Really take out a few of the anxieties or worries that you might be having about how you're doing. So how do you actually split up your placement so you are engaged and proactive in that learning? Well here's how. So we are going to break up the placement just as you would have your initial, your midpoint and your final interviews with your assessor. Within your first week that is definitely your settling in time. Now having worked with many different universities in my life as a nurse, some universities have four week placements which is the minimum at the moment that the NMC require you to actually be assessed in practice. It's 150 hours. That's really short and it's a really short time for you to show that you're engaged, proactive, you can set some objectives and you can meet them. It's really full on for you. So to help you within this first week when you've had your orientation and perhaps you're planning for your initial assessment, these are some questions that you really should be asking yourself at this specific time. What am I planning to learn here? What are my expectations of this placement environment? And what are my attitudes about this placement? What learning opportunities are there within this placement that I can set myself and achieve? Remember SMART objectives. Also, if you've been lucky enough to have been out to practice before, then note the feedback that you've received from other people and ask yourself if there's anything to learn from this. Are there points that you need to be developing further? But also, what is it that you're really good at and should continue to do? Now, when it comes to your first encounter with your assessors and your supervisors, but definitely your assessors, this is the time that you you really have to show that you're proactive and fully engaged in this learning experience. So how do you do that? By asking questions. But what questions should you ask to make yourself look proactive and engaged but not too eager? Because I also talked about that point too. A few examples could be, what do you expect of me during this placement? That's a really good key one because some assessors, as you might know from experience, may expect you to do more but some assessors may expect you to do less, so it's really important to check that one out with your assessor. Is there a student pack or an information file on this placement so I can gather some information around learning opportunities and expectations of students here? How often are we going to work together and what might that look like? Will we be working together directly or will you be the nurse in charge and I'll be working alongside other people and we can meet up to discuss how I'm doing? Is there anything specific to this placement that you think I should really review so I can get to grips with the work 
quicker and how would you like to plan our meetings and interviews do you want me to book them in or would you like us to go through the diary together now the next stage would be that you would meet with your assessor and complete your learning agreement I will do a video on smart objectives to give you some hints and tips on the sort of specifics that you should be looking at per year group so you've had your initial now you're working up towards your midpoint formal assessment but before your midpoint you should always be reviewing your objectives that were set at the initial interview this just pure make sure that you're still keeping on track and there won't be any surprises at your midpoint but ask yourself before that interview well check before that you've gathered all of your feedback from different people that you've worked with because I'm sure by now you've probably met with a few different people so definitely gather that feedback on how you're doing but also ask yourself the question what have I learned what am I enjoying about this placement but also what am I struggling with and might need a little bit of support if you can identify those areas before your midpoint and have those conversations with your assessors and with your supervisors you will either kind of put it right to before your midpoint assessment i.e it is highlighted to you that you are maybe a little bit slow when it comes to carrying out your routine observations on your patients I really really want you to become a little bit more proactive and when 10 o'clock comes I want you to go into the patients rooms and conduct those those assessments it's really important that we keep up on a timely assessment of our patients when you get that feedback act on it simple when it comes to your midpoint assessment you've either learnt that that's something that you need to develop on so you could highlight it to your assessor or you've put it right so then your assessor sees that development and doesn't need to address it with you because you're doing it yourself you're becoming proactive it's also really important to ask yourself before your midpoint interview what are you learning about yourself? You will be learning an awful lot about yourself, possibly without you even realizing it. So it's really important and a great thing to reflect on what you're learning about yourself in this placement. You can bring that then up at your midpoint assessment with your assessor and you can discuss what you're learning about the placement, but also what you're learning about yourself as a professional. From your midpoint, you should have already achieved some of your objectives. Potentially you've maybe already completed all of them and at which point your assessor and yourself will agree maybe on a few more to keep you on track for the rest of the placement or if there are areas in which have been highlighted to you to work on this could result in an action plan or a plan of action not quite sure what you might call them in your areas so this is often the time that students go from confident and they plummet right down. I am gonna do a video on how you can achieve the best from an action plan and how you can keep your own confidence high because that is, for me, with my experience, an area that is troubling for most students in practice. But really, all an action plan is, is that you've got areas in which you need to improve, you've gained that feedback, you need to develop on it. Continue to gather that feedback on those areas as you move through from your midpoint interview towards your final. And if you know how you're getting on with those, then again you're not going to have any surprises keep up conversations with your assessors and your supervisors gain all that feedback get it documented in your assessment document and that will make sure that you are keeping yourself on track for a pass so it's now final time but before your assessment again check that you've got all of that feedback documented that could be patient feedback as well but also make sure that you have completed all of the mini assessments that you might have had to do during the placement too you do not want to get to your final interview and only have half of it done it shows that you're not very proactive in your learning and you're not really engaged in that learning experience either two of the key things that you as students need to be doing remember and also there could be some reflection that you need to do on your own performance before that final interview so again just go through your assessment document and make sure everything from your point is completed before you get to that assessment be truthful with yourself and carry out a bit of critical reflection but don't be hard on yourself if you ask yourself what style of feedback do I want from staff to me it's often around being constructive and constructive as you know is not negative and it's not positive but it's constructive so there will be some positive bits in there there will be some bits that you need to work on but they should also highlight to you how you can work on those points so do that to yourself what do you really enjoy what are you doing well in placement and also what is it again that you're still struggling with and that's okay because you're a student 
relevant and you're there to learn, but how can you keep that momentum up when it comes to you needing to? If you're able to follow this kind of a process, then your assessments within placement will no longer become daunting and you will see it as part of that API process of you going through each placement to gather the relevant information and knowledge that you need to progress to the next stage. Hopefully now you can relax a little bit and enjoy some of that placement time. Until next time, take care.